Okay, um, now we come to the fish out of water part um, of tonight. For those of you who don't know what fish out of water is, um, I want to introduce the concept to you real quick. Usually what we do is invite students of foreign languages who learn foreign languages at the U of A or have learned them previously to come together and present a poem or whatever they want in the foreign languages they learn, just to provide them with a supportive, nice environment to practice their foreign language skills. This time, we've turned it a little bit around. <laughs> Usually, they perform original pieces in the foreign language. This time, we have translations of German poems. So it's still non-native, because our presenters are going to still um, perform non-native words, but in usually their native language. So uh, this is going to be really exciting, and we're also going to take you a little bit throughout German literary history. And we're actually going to start right now with uh, Professor Klassen from our department. He's going to uh, perform a poem by Oswald von Wolkenstein, which um, nicely shows multilingualism already in the Middle Ages. And I think he might uh, say a little bit more about it. How I've structured the PowerPoint is that you have the original on one side and then an in usually an English translation to follow along with it. Okay? So please welcome Professor Klassen. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a huge challenge. Awesome von Wolkenstein claimed to have learned up to 10 languages, and he was ruthless. And he created his poetry, about three or four of them that are multilingual. He is ruthless. He just puts it all in. And there are languages such as German, Middle High German, and there's Italian, Slovenian, French, Spanish, Catalan, Low German, Slovenian, Hungarian, and others. We know for sure that no one understood him. <laughs> That's for sure. So what I'm giving you is quickly a reading of his work, just one of his uh, three multilingual poems. It's very difficult to some extent. I'm not such a polyglot as he is. Um, and in reality, I should sing those songs. And if I dared to do, the room would be empty immediately. <laughs> I'm not doing that either. I just try my best reading to you. What I will do is exactly what he did. Uh, he had his poem, Klein 69, to um, Freit Amor, uh, written down once in the bleed multilingual form. And then he copied it once again and it provided the middle high German version. So I don't even know where to start and where to end. It is all mixed. So I will do this very quickly and try my best. And um, I always will switch, just as he wanted it to do. First the multilingual version on the left, and then the middle high German on the right. That's that in bold. And by the way, thanks to Karen for helping getting this uh, PowerPoint together. So, du freit am Wars, ach was, mein Lied. Adieu à me, hilf mir. Mayut, fährt, ni ors, nein ross. Nai moi serce, dazu mein herz, rein mit gedeck. Frau pur eti, ek lap, ek slap. Ich lauf, ich slaif. Wel, wel, wo waro, oder wo ich geh. Wäsche. Ehrlich, mein Kraft, mit dir's Dobre, der halt mich fast, in Klaff, ich eigen, es frank und frei, mehr schi voice krieg, der denk, der denklich rüff, mille schenner, zart liebstes Weib, immer sie hin, mein Gürt, mein Herz, Herr Omnia, überall, meins Leibes spür, Cenza Besti, an alle Spott, mit äh, Groschner war, mit schöner Wert, 
Tut Zergerei, ich dir dir das. Pur Cetti Geisch, nur was du willst. Nehmt du den und weiß nicht, frei, für wahr, kein falscher Reis, Gott et wohl tri, Gott weiß wohl wir, ich da amar, ich dich liert hab, der mit am Mandesch, nur was du willst, Margarita will, mein schöne Gret, ex profundes, aus ganzen Gründen, das tür ich schnell, das löff, das glob, trager griert, mir begriert, der ma vor, auf mein Treu, in Recomissio, in dein Befehlnis, Dios in Tag und Nacht, mit die Kommando, mich dir empfehl ich, wo ich trott Genre liebe, Feuer, nur dein, Alop mit Freude, all auf mein Treu. Thank you. Hey, thank you for this. Um, we're moving on a little bit to German Romanticism. Um, we, um, and I would like to uh, welcome Eric Miguel Avia from the Department of Spanish and Portuguese. He's an AMA student there. And he will read to us the poem Diotima in Spanish. We don't have a, uh, an English translation for that. We just have the German. But since it's romanticism and because it's all about feelings, we've invited Eric to provide us with what he thinks the poem means and why it means so much to him. So please welcome Eric. That much, uh, yeah. So I wanted to talk a, a little bit about, um, um, yeah. Um, they um, say that these types of poems today, sometimes people do not like them as much, and with people I mean writers, uh, because they think, oh, it's very s simple feelings. There's no abstract thought in all of this, and I actually believe that when I was a uh, I'm a young writer now, I think I'm 27. When I was like 18, 15, from 15 to 23, I, uh, I actually thought, well, yeah, that is kind of true. I never really read the romantics because I thought that it was just simple feelings and all that. And I always try to look for works that were more intellectual and abstract and had like very complex ideas, you know, as a young writer. Um, but then I just like uh, started to study literature, so I just like read a whole lot of, uh, lot of authors. And the point that I'm trying to make is that my view of Romanticismo from some readings that I've done right now has really made me rediscover this so-called simple feelings. There is this philosopher who is from Vienna. He, he, um, his, his name is Wittgenstein. And his work has really influenced me as a writer. I'm from Mexico. And I, there was this phrase in the story of Philip Weiss that really caught my attention. And he said that, imagine there is something that has no meaning at all. And then at the bottom it says that it has no meaning at all, so it can mean anything at all. And that is, that is a main idea of Wittgenstein in his philosoph philosophical investigations. He um, gets in a, a quarry with a lot of philosophers, he says that they actually muddy the waters and because they're always trying to find new meanings. But Wittgenstein, when he studies how normal people, how ordinary people make meanings, he says when philosophers look 
for nothingness, they actually do not understand that it's weird for anything to be at all, in meaning. So that idea really stuck to me, and I'm like, okay, so I've been trying to find, as a writer and all of the writer friends that I have had for the last five years, I have tried to find, to express new meanings when actually love in real life, for it to even be at all, is so weird, you know? So I've been influenced, being influenced right now by the romantics. I've been going back to them, the Mexican romantics, principalmente. And what I thought was corny at first now feels really intense and weird just because it's, it exists. So it's, it is through the ideas of Wittgenstein, and there is this, the other writer that influences me a lot is actually another writer from, from El País de Austria. I think in German it's pronounced Musil, Robert Musil. Love him. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, let us explore this poem in Espanol and try to feel the simple feelings as something actually real, you know? And let us try to find how the poet, I do not know how to pronounce his name in German, how he establishes a type of myth of how to feel love in the first place at all in the poem. Okay, so without further ado, um, I'll start in Espanol. Okay. Yotima. Largamente muerto y replegado en sí mismo, mi corazón saluda la belleza del mundo. Sus ramas florecen y echan brotes abultadas por una savia nueva, o yo volveré a vivir, así como el feliz esfuerzo de mis flores, atravesando su dura cápsula se lanza hacia el aire y la luz. ¿Cómo ha cambiado el aspecto de todo lo que odié y temí? Enlaza hoy sus tiernos acordes a la melodía de mi vida. Y cada vez que la hora suena, una misteriosa emoción me recuerda los días dorados de mi infancia, desde que ahí hallé mi único bien. Diótima, dichoso ser, alma sublime porque mi corazón repuesto de la angustia de vivir se promete la juventud eterna de los dioses. Nuestro cielo durará antes ya de verse nuestras almas, ligadas por sus insondables honduras, se habían reconocido. Cuando envuelto por los sueños de la infancia, apacible como el azul del día, yo descansaba sobre el suelo entibiado bajo los árboles de mi jardín, cuando empezaba la primera, la primavera de mi vida, con suaves acordes de gozo y belleza, el alma de Diótima como un céfiro pasaba entre las ramas sobre mí. Y cuando tal una leyenda, la belleza se borró de mi vida y me hallé indigente y ciego, excluido de tanto paraíso. Con el peso del día me aplastaba y mi vida fría, descolorida, deseaba ya declinante el mundo reino de las sombras. Entonces del ideal volvieron como desde el cielo fuerza y ánimo y apareciste radiante en mi noche, divina imagen. Dejando el puerto mundo para unirme a ti, lancé de nuevo mi nave adormecida al azul del océano. Ahora he vuelto a encontrarte, más hermosa que como te había soñado a las horas solemnes del amor. Noble y buena allí estás, oh pobreza de la fantasía, solo tú, naturaleza, puedes crear este modelo único, en medio de eternas armonías, feliz en tu protección. Como los bienaventurados en sus altos parajes, donde el júbilo busca refugio y florece la inalterable belleza liberada de la existencia, como urania melodiosa, en medio de caos desencadenado, ella sigue divina y pura entre la ruina de los tiempos. Tras prodigar de todos los homenajes, mi espíritu, confuso, vencido, trató de conquistar a la que sobrepasa sus pensamientos más atrevidos. 
ardor solar y dulceral primaveral, guerra y paz luchan en el fondo de mi corazón frente a esta imagen angelical. Muchas veces vertí ante ella oleadas de lágrimas de mi corazón y traté en cada acorde de la vida de vibrar al unísono con su dulzura. A veces, herido en lo profundo, imploré su piedad cuando el cielo que ella posee se abre claro y santo a mis ojos. Pero cuando en su, en su silencio rico infinitamente, con una sola mirada, una sola palabra, su alma transmite a la mía su paz y su plenitud. Cuando veo al Dios que me anima a alumbrar una llama en su frente y vencido por la admiración, me acuso ante ella de mi nada. Entonces su alma celeste me precipita. En la dulzura de un juego infantil y bajo su hechizo mis cadenas se desanudan gozosamente. Así aparece mi pobre de nuevo y se borra el último rastro de mis luchas. Mi naturaleza mortal entra en la plenitud de una vida de Dios. Y en adelante mi elemento es ese donde ninguna fuerza terrestre, ninguna orden divina nos separa más, allí donde saboreamos la unión total. Porque ahí tiempos, cálculos que nada valen, necesidad son olvidados. Por fin entonces me siento vivir. Así como la constelación de las Trindáridas con majestuoso centelleo prosigue su trayecto apacible como nosotros, en las alturas del cielo nocturno. También declina ancha y brillante desde la bóveda del cielo hacia el oleaje donde la llama un dulce reposo. Y nosotros, oh ardor de nuestras almas, encontramos en tu tumba bendita, nos avistamos en el oleaje exultante de un cubilo muro. Luego, cuando al llamado de la hora, despiertos ya, llenos de un orgullo nuevo, volvemos como las estrellas a la noche breve de la vida. got the real fish out of water experience because usually we don't have translation so we just listen to the sound of the language and I hope that you felt the love. Okay our next poem brings us into the 20th century when I knew we had a French speaker I was trying to figure out what we could have her read and we've heard a lot about the uh, tense relationship between France and Germany um, this week and so we chose a poem by Bertolt Brecht, An die Nachgeborenen. Um, I won't read the French title, <laughs> um, but basically it means to those who were born after. And I would like to introduce Professor um, Vehir from the Department of Italian and French, who will perform this poem. Long, long time ago, I was a student, uh, I studied Germanistic in West Berlin at the time when Berlin was still West Berlin. And uh, Bertolt was uh, one of my favorite authors. So I'm very happy and grateful for the invitation, Barbara, to come and read this poem uh, to you. So as you can see from the title, where uh, German uses three words, we need six in French. A ceux qui viendront après nous. Vraiment, je vis en de sombres temps. Un langage scandalise ces signes de sottise, un front lisse d'insensibilité. Celui qui rit n'a pas encore reçu la terrible nouvelle. Que sont donc ces temps pour parler des arbres presque un crime, puisque c'est faire silence sur tant de forfaits Celui qui là-bas traverse tranquillement la rue, n'est-il donc plus accessible à ses amis qui sont dans la détresse C'est vrai, je gagne encore de quoi vivre, mais croyez-moi, c'est pur hasard. Manger à ma faim, rien de ce que je fais ne m'en donne le droit. Par hasard, je suis épargné. Que ma chance me quitte et je suis perdu. On me dit, mange-toi et bois, sois heureux d'avoir ce que tu as. Mais comment puis-je manger et boire alors que j'enlève ce que je mange à la famine, que mon verre d'eau manque à celui qui meurt de soif, et pourtant je mange et je bois J'aimerais aussi être un sage. Dans les livres anciens, il est dit ce qu'est la sagesse, se tenir à l'écart des querelles du monde et sans crainte passer son peu de temps sur terre, aller son chemin sans violence, rendre le bien pour le mal, ne pas satisfaire ses désirs, mais les oublier est aussi tenu pour sage. Tout ça est impossible. 
Vraiment, je vis en le sombre temps. Je vins dans les villes au temps du désordre, quand la famine y régnait. Je vins parmi les hommes au temps de l'émeute, et je m'insurgeais avec eux. Ainsi se passa le temps qui me fut donné sur la terre. Mon pain, je le mangeais entre les batailles. Pour dormir, je m'étendais parmi les assassins. L'amour, je m'y adonnais sans plus d'égard. Et devant la nature, j'étais sans indulgence. Ainsi se passa le temps qui me fut donné sur terre. De mon temps, les rues menaient au marécage. Le langage me dénonçait au bourreau. Je n'avais que peu de pouvoir, mais celui des maîtres était sans moi plus assuré. Du moins, je l'espérais. Ainsi se passa le temps qui me fut donné sur terre. Les forces étaient limitées. Le but restait dans le lointain, nettement visible, bien que pour moi presque hors d'atteinte. Ainsi se passa le temps qui me fut donné sur terre. Vous qui émergerez du flot où nous avons sombré, quand vous parlez de nos faiblesses, au sombre temps aussi, dont vous êtes sauvés, nous, nous allions changeant de pays plus souvent que de souliers, à travers les guerres de classe, désespérés, là où il n'y avait qu'injustice et pas de révolte. Nous le savons, la haine contre la bassesse, elle aussi, tord les traits. La colère contre la justice rend rauque la voix. Hélas, nous qui voulions préparer le terrain à l'amitié, nous ne pouvions être nous-mêmes amicaux. Mais vous, quand le temps sera venu, où l'homme aide l'homme, pensez à nous avec indulgence. And um, for respect for the time, we'll move on to the last one. Um, we're going to perform Der Erlkönig von Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. And uh, the idea we had is that even in our department, we have a lot of speakers of different languages. And so what we want to do is a multilingual reading of Goethe's Erlkönig. And um, I would like to welcome Professor David Gramling from our department, and then Ethan and Chanella. Charlie, Sarah, and Chris to read this with me. Who rides there so late through the night, dark and drear? The father it is, with his infant so dear. He holds the boy tightly clasped in his arm. He holds him safely to keep it from warm. Figlio mio, perché nascondi così timoroso il tuo viso? Non vedi padre il re degli elfi? Il re degli elfi con la corona e lo strascico? Figlio mio, una striscia di nebbia. Tu lui fai parlare, permetti no. Red parle like a, like a bitu. Min elve part are of bloomer full. O mi murs calcrete i copa of gul. My father, my father, before he meet, but the elderly conic in the sapphires below, place rusted, fly rusted, my kind, in dormant branches fly to the wind. Mut tu ver a fond, the sweet will avar. Me fi ver dre, me tendre deja. Me fi son en grâce à de chant qui vient, et tasse, et danse, la rance en smart. Rodime les les noites al sovado cere, mi ha dicho que va a destión de que te, o ni el pis se supone no no es no es lo que ni, el golpe es el que le estoya sobre mí. Se ni se vio, en dame benedeli ejo, gunudu vermesin zorla alurum dijo. Baba, bana babacım, şimdi bana dokunuyor, gül gül ki onu bana acı veriyor. Dem Vater grauset, er reitet geschwind, er hält in Armen das ächzende Kind, er reicht den Hof mit Mühe und Not in seinen Armen, das Kind fragt nicht.
Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Uh, I think we are now at the point in our program that we would like to uh, give the prizes for the posters. And Chantal, uh, Professor Chantal Warner from the Department of German Studies will be choreographing this book. Thank you. Um, for those of you who haven't seen them already, there are a number of posters outside, so I invite you during the reception to go and have a look. Um, this was a poster competition that was held across a couple of our 300 level courses. Um, we had eight posters in total, uh, 21 students, I think we had almost 22, we had one student who had two posters. Um, and these the topics were selected by the students themselves and all related to the topic of Germany and Europe for this week. And, um, we, it was a very difficult decision. We had to select two for the top prizes, and I know that in these moments you have to say it's a difficult decision, but this was truly a difficult decision. Uh, the students really went above and beyond. I think they were <coughs> extensively researched, they're beautifully designed, as you'll see if you go out there, and they were all very conversant and eloquent in both English and German about the topics they had selected. Uh, but we did have to choose just two for the first and second place. Um, and so I'm gonna start with the second place. And that was a poster that was on the Todesstrafe, so the um, death penalty. Um, they, they researched the topic um, in how it relates in Germany and then how that relates to the European context. And so the two students who did that pre poster presentation were Alyssa Thomas and Catherine Herrera. to first prize. Um, the first prize was a poster that was on globalization, so globalization, uh, and the students looked at that across three different countries and how they relate, oh, I'm sorry, the conflict, oh, I'm messing it up, uh, with the conflict poster where they looked at how that relates to three different countries. They looked at the Ukraine, uh, Greece, and France, and compared how Germany's relations to these various countries, um, how they deal with conflict in different ways across these European countries. So the presenters, the uh, poster presenters for that poster were Reed Sasson. Go ahead and come on up here. I see all three of you here. <laughs> and Rafa Delphi. associated with the top two. However, since everyone did such a wonderful job, we do actually have a prize for all of the poster presenters. So if those of you who are still here, I see many of you still here, um, please come up and see myself and Charlie um, after this event, and we'll make sure to give those to you, and we'll be in touch with the rest of you about the prize. So um, can we please give a round of applause to all of the
Center for funding us, as well as the EU Center at the University of Colorado, which was also very generous. And finally, as Barbara mentioned, we received a call for a submission of another grant proposal, and we are clearly gluttons for punishment. <laughs> and uh, I think that we will aim for another event this fall. The theme will be the 25th anniversary of the fall of the wall. I want to thank all of you for making this a great experience, and uh, I think the reception is right outside.